Hello and welcome to my blog. Today we want to talk about cleaning pharmaceutical plants where highly active products are processed. For a long time one of the most common cleaning criteria in pharmaceutical plants has been visually clean. The plant must look visually clean and no product residues should be visible on the plant after cleaning. This is the most simplest cleaning criterion. There are other criteria that are also applied, such as 1000s of the lowest effective dose and others, but these criteria all do not address the pharmaceutical potency of a specific active pharmaceutical ingredient and the pharmaceutical effect. They are non-specific in a certain way. Finally, in 2015, the PDE value the permittable daily exposure was introduced in the European area by the EMA as a limit value that defines for each ingredient of a pharmaceutical product a maximum limit that is still permissible as a residue after cleaning on the surfaces in contact with the product without causing cross-contamination. Since then, this limit value has been widely used as a guideline, even in non-European countries. Cleaning can be carried out purely manually or fully automatically and in reality all conceivable mixed forms of both also occur. The fully automatic cleaning is CIP, cleaning in place, and partially automatic cleaning is called WIP, washing in place. The automatic part of a plant cleaning is recipe controlled in the cleaning process. The cleaning medium is provided by such a cleaning station. Here, the various media, cold water, warm water, purified water, compressed air are brought to the required flow rate and temperature, and detergents needed for the cleaning process are added through these dosing pumps. The booster pump maintains the required flow and pressure, and in the steam heater, the cleaning medium is heated up to the necessary temperature to achieve a good cleaning result. What do we see here? This is a recirculating cleaning station. In certain process steps, the cleaning medium is recycled from the process machine to the recycling tank and reused for the next cleaning cycle in the same process step. This reduces the consumption of detergents and energy significantly. The second tank is used for storing purified water. The flow in the cleaning process is around 6 meter cube per hour. Quite often the supply of purified water is less than this. But for a good cleaning result, we need 6 meter cube per hour. So the required quantity is stored in this tank shortly before the last rinse with purified water is started and the booster pump will then be able to provide the re required flow. The first cleaning phase is usually done with cold water to rinse the product residues out of the system. But do we use cold water for this? Well, some ingredients such as cellulose swell when they come in contact with hot water. They form a gel in case of cellulose or a pudding like in cornstarch. You can't get either out of the plant without lengthy manual intervention. Therefore, note, use cold water for the first rinse to have not such, such problems. Then we have to clean the plant with different detergents, perhaps in several steps in a process tailored to the ingredients and the limit values to be achieved. The chemical nature of the API plays an important role here. Perhaps it is easier to clean off when exposed to an acidic or to a basic medium. The associated temperature and duration complete the cleaning recipe. To wash the detergents out of the system, rinsing is usually done with clear tap water. And to avoid the formation of lime stains, a final rinse with purified water rinses the lime containing water from the previous rinse out of the system. After these wet cleaning steps, the lines are blown dry to prevent the formation of germs. A plant is only completely cleaned when it is also dry afterwards. 
all these process steps are accomplished with a cleaning station. The cold cleaning water is brought to the required pressure and flow by this booster pump. With these dosing pumps, depending on the process step, one or successively different cleaning media are dosed. In the heater, the cleaning medium is now brought to the required temperature and distributed to the system via the distribution valves. The valves are pipelines in this cleaning rack are designed in such a way that they can be completely emptied and no residue remains in them after cleaning. In the cleaning recipe is defined which of the cleaning nozzles is activated at which time and how long in the loop. Additional to the machine tower, which is clean here, also other parts in the installation, the inlet air, the exhaust air piping are partially cleaned all with the aim to reduce the risk of cross-contamination when running the next product in the same machine. So, there was a lot of info for one blog post now. In the coming weeks, we will look at plants with automatic and semi-automatic cleaning, like in CIP or WIP plants. If you have any questions about cleaning pharmaceutical equipment, please write me at focusing.containment at glad.com, we can get in touch. Until next week, I wish you to stay healthy, stay safe, and stay tuned.